My name is Coach Thomas. I am a fitness, health, and nutrition coach and member of the Illinois Governor's Council on Health and Physical Fitness. Make sure you check out Change for the Better with Coach Thomas Sunday nights from 7 to 8 p.m. We will discuss topics and feature guests that will give you helpful tips and advice on how to create healthier habits that will lead to a healthier lifestyle. Make sure you check out Change for the Better with Coach Thomas where we focus on healthy kids and healthy communities. Tune in to Change for the Better with Coach Thomas Sundays 7 to 8 p.m. only on Urban Broadcast Media. Hello, this is Leon Finney, your host of Another Perspective on UrbanBroadcastMedia.com. We are the voice of Black America. Join me and my guests every Saturday from 4 to 5 p.m. as we discuss the issues that impact Black America. Tune in to UBM Talk on UrbanBroadcastMedia.com. The simulcast on our affiliate station, WBON, 1690 AM. That's Another Perspective every Saturday from 4 to 5 p.m. And you can run and tell. A vibrant mix is back with a new format. Same informative and vibrant topics. And a new co-host. Yep, we heard you. And Cousin Fred is on permanently. Hey, this is Fred. Join us every Friday from noon until 1. Same great conversation, same vibrant mix. A vibrant mix with Tasha and Tamiko. And Fred. Right here on UrbanBroadcastMedia.com. Lord, how did I get in between T and T? Watch out, Fred. We're explosive. Baseline with me, Chris Bass. Man, they come back with a cake. It came back. Speak. You sounded like this is the wheel or something, like it's going to change the world. This doesn't the matter? Okay, cool. What? Say what again? Say what again? I dare you. I double dare you. The sales will say, okay, here we go. Uh, Chris Bass at Baseline. Monday through Friday, 4 to 6 p.m. Central, right here on the great UBM. Talk urban broadcast media.com. I got to come at base here. You're going crazy over this. Not bad. The following show is paid programming and does not necessarily express the views and opinions of Urban Broadcast Media and its subsidiaries. Thank you for listening to UBM Talk. Hey, and welcome to the Let's Stay Together show. I'm your host, Reverend Rick McCain, along with my baby, my girl, my boo, author Brenda McCain. How you doing, baby? I'm doing how you doing? Oh, man, I'm surviving. I don't know what they're trying to do in Chicago. They're trying to kill us with all this stuff. There's 15 to 19 uh, inches of snow, I, but we made it. The McCain train never stops. Mm-mm. We're here live in UBM because we never stop moving. Mm, our with next our stop, loyal guests, I'm too. telling you, loyal guests. Mm, and Go our ahead. future trainee. And yes, Tracy, tra- what's that girl's name, that future trainee's name? Oh, we're going to introduce oh, Erica introduce her? Yeah, to the gonna world Erica, tonight. Yeah. Okay, you ready Our little baby girl is here. Yeah, do your thing, girl. Okay. Welcome to the Let's Stay Together Talk Radio Show, where we learn the rhythms of all relationships. So to know our glory, you have to do what, babe? you got to know our backstory. It's a nice topic. Free yourself from a financial fiasco. Learn how to manage your money. Yes, it is very easy to pull out the plastic and charge what it is that you desire. Nonetheless, managing your money can be challenging and mundane, especially after the holidays when the aftermath of the bill statements start rolling in. You are now forced and made accountable to your spending habits. However, if you are tired of living from paycheck to paycheck like most of us or often find yourself wondering where your money went, this is the show for you. Yes, Lord. Joining us tonight on the McCain train to teach us how to manage our money and to gain some financial freedom is the lovely Michelle Chambers, who came to play in the snow. She has worked in finance and professional sports for over 24 years. Mm. That is unheard of. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> okay, yeah, okay. <laughs> Her passion is educating young women and couples in creating sustainable long-term financial planning and money management. No young men? I'm about to get some. No, but you said she shares hers as educating But that's women. her desire and passion. Uh, okay, all right. You got to get pick up on a key word. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, well, now we have <laughs> Mr. James William Owens, who came out to play in the snow, or well, rather to be on the McCain train. Yeah. He is a registered representative at PFS Investments, Inc. He strongly believes in learning and teaching about entrepreneurship, business ownership, how money works, we all need to know how money works, and growing your assets to stay ahead in today's economy. Now, if you want to know about these two, as I call them, our expertise, you need to go to our website. 
Let's stay together show dot webs dot com. Mm. You ready for me to give us some yeah, word? Yeah, get that word, baby. Okay, the word for the night is talking about tithing and managing our finances. Luke six thirty eight says, "Give and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will put you into your lap. For with the measure you use it, it will be measured back to you." Now, pronounce that Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes. I said it right. 510 says, he who loves money would not be satisfied with money, nor he who loves wealth with his income. This is called vanity. But we're going to go between the two today. We're going to call in and join this conversation at 312-754-4333. Or, as usual, do the social media with Tracy over here, and let's get connected. So are you gonna do uh, the the introduction to uh, your, her name is gonna be baby girl to me because it's Erica. So are you gonna do an introduction? Uh, introduction? Introduction? I'm, I'm sounding like Let that me person, Michelle. Now, <laughs> yeah, that's yes. quite embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have the lovely Miss Erica Johnson. Ba- with, uh, you, you just baby girl to me from now on. So you right, she's yeah. the baby, baby on the girl. Train. That's all you're gonna be. So she's joining us with um. Well, she's gonna learn. We're gonna learn a lot from Erica, and Erica's gonna learn a lot from us. So. Yeah, we. And, and did, you, did you say Tracy was here too? Tracy and of course, Howard? if you let me finish. Okay, go ahead and okay, finish, girl. Yeah. You, you're trying to act all mean course, on the radio show. No, I'm not. You remember of course, I got, you remember got, I got the key. Go ahead. <laughs> I got the girl. Thank you. And I'm sure James will have us, too. And Eric will be rolling with us that mm-hmm. year. Okay. <laughs> anyway, we have Miss Tracy, lovely Tracy, again. She's ride or die chick with us. Love you for coming out, Tracy. And all of you guys for making it through the, the snow today. We appreciate you. Yes, we do. Hey, you know, uh, I was looking at this, and we were looking at the uh, show, Free Yourself from the Financial Fiasco. How to learn to manage your money. And Michelle, you know, hey, I like that. Michelle, what I've learned about it says, it was saying to me that the results of the study suggest that many Americans are not ready. But they were saying that 62% of Americans say that they're financially ready for retirement. Michelle, this is just me talking, and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm the host of the show, so I can get in trouble. I don't really believe that 62% of the Americans are actually ready for their financial uh, retirement. So talk to me about that. Are, are people just saying that because, you know, things are personal and they don't really want to tell people, I ain't ready? Absolutely. There are um, three lies that people tell about their finances. That's how much money they make, how much money they have, and how much money they owe. So when you when you hear these polls, when you read these uh, surveys, Generally, people are, you know, they're embellishing, they're embarrassed. Um, Mostly, you know, money is very personal. Money is very emotional. So generally, people keep it close to the vest. So I would would, uh, mention to say uh, maybe 35% of people are really, really ready for retirement or have a grasp on their retirement. So um, I, I think 64% is, is, is way exaggerated quite now, a bit. Now, why do people sit there and say something like that knowing that they're not? I mean, I'm ready for retirement, mm-hmm. but I ain't financially ready for retirement. I mean, right. I'm ready to retire today, right. but financially I'm not. So why do we sit there sometimes and say, yes, we're ready, but we know that we're not? What is the fear of actually just telling somebody, no, I'm not ready? Well, I think because in this society – uh, we are measured by our what what people think we are, what we have. So you know, if you if general, if you make fifty thousand dollars, if somebody say, "How much do you make?" I make seventy five, and that's because of the society and the right, yeah. that we live in. People embellish; they want to make themselves feel better. So I think that has a lot to do with, and it's also for to themselves. They're lying to themselves because they know they have not put forth the effort. effort or the education to get to the place they should be at. So I'm I'm the only one when somebody say, Bryn, you broke, and I'm honestly saying, yeah, I'm broke. I'm about the only one that says that. (laughs) Oh, you too, Tracy. Okay, we honest with ours. And, you know, know, unfortunately, a lot of times people don't. Uh, James, you're you're a younger man, you know, uh, here. Uh, You know, I ain't got to ask you how old you are, but how old are you, James? You twenty six years. You got to move a little bit closer to that mic too, man. Twenty six years. Your young. voice ain't as deep as mine, so they're <laughs> not gonna hear you, bro. But uh, so, talk to me about the young man and their savings. Should they be saving now? Uh, definitely. The earlier that you start saving, the better, because the longer you wait, the more it's gonna cost you to even save up for retirement. It's just gonna be a lot tougher. It's gonna be a lot tougher. And I think a lot of times back in the day, people thought that I could start about maybe forty five years old. Mm-hmm. 
But now they're telling people now that you should start as early as 25. You should start as early as your first full-time job. Oh, well, so that's if it's, good. it's right out of college at 21, abs- start that day. Yeah. Absolutely. And so, James, do you do you, you you agree that, you know, that we should start as soon as we can? I'll say it started before you're born. <laughs> <laughs> you you, you want to get that, that money. I mean, hey, that's that's parents. That's that's what you call uh, uh, hereditary, you know. Mm-hmm. We've got yeah. something called right now on the line from Bullock and Associates. I don't know who in the heck is this calling. But, hey, we're going to put them on the line. Thank you for calling. Uh, give me a second here. Y'all, y'all looking at me like I'm crazy. Hey, uh, welcome to the Let's Stay Together show. Who's calling? Uh, this is Halima. Halima. Sorry, this is Lisa. Hey, Hello? Lisa, how you doing? I'm good. All right. Hey. hey, Halima. Hi. Hi, how you doing? Hey, what do you got to say about uh, what we're talking about today, about being freeing yourself from finance? And she dropped. What happened? She does not oh. want to free herself from finance. <laughs> Hopefully we'll get her right back in a few seconds. Hey, baby, go to your next question, and we'll, go, we'll get Ooh, her in a second. While we're waiting on the beautiful Halima, I believe she's beautiful because of that name is so beautiful. What are some key principles to getting out of debt? So we're putting you in there because we know you in there. And what I'm going to stop you because she's right back on the line, so we're going to okay. try to get her. Halima, you back? I was the caller that I got cut off. Okay, well, we got you back on there. I don't know what happened, but praise be to God, you're back on the line. (laughs) Talk to me a little bit about this. Uh, We're talking about freeing yourself from financial fiasco. Well, uh, you know, first I I would like to thank you for hosting this show. I think that this topic is extremely important. You know, as a a young lady in my my 30s, I actually had the wonderful opportunity to meet uh, Michelle, who became a financial mentor for me. And the reason why I can say that this is important is because when I started uh, meeting with her and she started mentoring me financially, I had a terrible credit score. Um, I wasn't doing a good job at saving my money. I was just spending whenever I got paid. Sound like me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so I think one of the really amazing things that I learned uh, from Michelle, who is uh, one of the panelists on the call, is the importance of thinking of money differently, mm. uh, not just thinking about how to put together a spreadsheet and budget your money or what you should spend and what you shouldn't spend, but having the kind of philosophy around your finances that speaks to having a legacy. You talked about retirement, you know, making sure that you're investing, making sure that you're making financial decisions that contribute to a greater legacy. And that's one of the most incredible lessons that I've learned from um, having a financial mentor. That's Michelle. Hey, so what can you say good about Michelle? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm a, I'm, I, I didn't heard all that. And I'm mad at her. She ain't helped me with a penny yet. I'm going mean, to have to really go over there and talk to her. But, you know, the great thing is, is that, you know, you have somebody that you help and then someone will call and say, hey, this is a good person that can help you out with your financials. So you're, right now you're doing much better than you were before. And so what would be one of the things that you could tell somebody real quick that they definitely need to do as far as finding someone to help them financially? Um, definitely pull your credit score. Figure out what your credit score was. That was one of the things. When Michelle asked me what my credit score was, I had no idea. I never looked at my credit score. Mm-hmm. And then analyze your credit. Think about the kind of credit cards that you have. Think about a plan to increase your score if you have a lower score. If your credit score is kind of okay, you know, still make sure that you're making financial decisions that contribute to not just doing one thing. Hey, I got to improve my credit so I can buy a car or so that I can buy a house. Mm-hmm. But making sure that you have a really amazing financial position so that 10 years from now, five years from now, even three years from now, you're able to do financially what you would like to do. Hey, well, thank you very much for calling. That was excellent. Thank and you. uh we definitely, uh, when after this get through over, Michelle's going to take over, take over my money, I guess. <laughs> because I, I, I don't She'll help you out. She'll change your life, I'm telling you. Hey, I don't, I, I don't even want to tell you what my credit score is. It's so bad that they, they, they don't even want to put it in the, in the uh, books anymore. Like, man, don't even ask. But thank you, uh, Halima, for giving us a call for the Let's Stay Together show, thank okay? You thank you. Thank you for the show. All right, thank you. Take care. Hey, uh, Michelle, so we got all those good things you want to say about that. So you basically are helping people to understand how they should put their lives in order financially. Right. Uh, Well, what I do is I have several young women and a couple couples I've helped is that most people have no idea. They just know they don't have any money. Mm -hmm. They know my credit is poor, but they don't really know why. So, you know, the first thing I tell them is, is like Halima said, Pull your credit report. Everyone in America gets a free credit report. Annualcreditreport.com. Log on, 
pull your credit report so you can see what's hurting your credit, what's not hurting your credit, and work on those things. There may be medical bills, old cell phone bills.